Welcome back to the Weber Kettle Series brought to you by Fogo Charcoal here on Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today we have got this Weber set up beautifully for some hot and fast and low and slow cooking and I think it's time to fire it up. That's right folks, today I'm going to show you how to cook a beautiful picanha and it is going to be delicious. This is a picanha. Pat it dry. This is a USDA prime picanha. Don't see these too often, but when I do, I tend to pick them up, hence the vac seal. But this is basically a sirloin cut, also known as the culotte or the top sirloin roast. And this is probably my second favorite cut after the ribeye when it comes to steaks. Very meaty, very beefy, nice and tender, and it's got a beautiful fat cap on there. And something about the fat cap on a picanha just hits different than other cuts. And there are several ways you can cook this thing. You can cut it into individual steaks and grill them off that way, or you can leave them as a whole roast. And that's what we're gonna do today. But first, we need to get it seasoned up. So, I'm just gonna go on with a heavy amount of some kosher salt all the way around. It's a big piece of meat, don't be too shy about it. Fat cap as well. And don't forget the sides, folks. Beautiful. So now onto this wire rack fat cap down. I'm gonna pop this into my fridge for the next few hours to really let that salt dissolve and kind of penetrate into the meat, giving us flavor all the way throughout. A few hours later, this picanha is coming out of the fridge after its nice little dry brine, and it is looking lovely. So to finish seasoning it up, we're gonna hit it with a little bit of oil to help the rest of our rub stick. Rub that in until it's nice and tacky, and we'll do the other side as well. Next up, we're gonna go on with some black pepper, as well as some granulated garlic. But you can do whatever you like on a cut like this. Traditionally, it's just salt, but I like a little extra flavor on there. And we are in Texas after all, so gotta have some black pepper. Looking good. Let's fire up the Weber. I've got the slow and sear here filled up with a decent amount of some fogo charcoal. I'm gonna throw in a lump of some pecan wood kind of off to the side here to add a little smoke to the party. On with the lid. I'm gonna dial this in for right around 250, 275 degrees. Now that our temp is dialed in and our smoke is cleaned up a little bit, we're gonna go on in with our picanha. Going in on the indirect side over here, we're doing a classic reverse sear on this thing. And whenever possible, aim the thickest part towards the fire. And we'll check back in in a little bit. We're also gonna get some broccoli going. Just gonna cut these to get a little more surface area on them. On some foil, there you go. Hit these with a little bit of some olive oil and some salt and pepper. Beautiful. After about an hour and a half, this thing is reading about 120 internal. So we're gonna pull it off and let it rest, carry over, and then we're gonna sear it off. And while we wait for it to come up to temp, we're also gonna get some more charcoal going to make sure we get a really nice sear on this thing. We're also gonna throw our broccoli packet on there while this charcoal comes up to temp. And after just about 10 minutes, this broccoli is nicely steamed, probing nice and tender in the stock. So off this comes. And now we sear this off. Woo, gotta love that. Really won't take long, folks. And that's one thing I really like about the slow and sear over other baffles I've had, is that it's big enough to actually sear on, as opposed to just being a tiny little baffle in the corner. Gotta love a good char. And we'll finish off this broccoli on the hot side as well. Love it. Gotta love a good picanha, folks. It's honestly a lot like a tri-tip, you know? It's a sirloin roast with three points on it. But just like a tri-tip, because it gets thinner on the edges and has different thicknesses in the middle than it does on this end, it's a great way to feed a family or a crowd because you're gonna have some parts that are more well done and some parts that are rare, and it's all tasty. So looking at the bottom here, we're trying to figure out which way the grain is going, and it looks like it's going in this direction. So we're gonna be wanting to cut it against the grain going this way. Ooh, smelling so good. Beautiful color on there, major fat cap. Probably could have taken that down a little bit, but still looking tasty. Just look how juicy it is. Mmm. I gotta give that a try. Mm-hmm. 
Oh wow, it's just so soft, so tender, so juicy. Oh, that fat cap is so good. Nice and smoky, good charcoal flavor to it. I mean, what more do you need in life than that? Can't forget the broccoli. And come on, there we go, perfect weeknight dinner. Mmm, gotta love some broccoli. Tell you what, got some nice grill flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Great way to feed a crowd, perfect for the summer. Just another great cut to have in your arsenal. Especially because you can cook it in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. You know I've cooked picanha before on this channel. Last time I cut it into individual steaks. And honestly, I think I might like that way a little bit better just because you're gonna get a bit better of a render on this fat. Then again, this one also has a pretty epic fat cap on it. But it's really cool to do it both ways. See whichever way you like it better. And if I was doing a festival or something or feeding a large group, this would be the way to do it. A lot easier than flipping four individual steaks. Then again, it's kind of like a prime rib, right? You can cut it up and have ribeye steaks or you can keep it whole and have this big, beautiful, medium rare roast with a wonderful sear on it. Can't go wrong. Oh, this broccoli and all this steak juice down here. Don't mind if I do. And yeah, you can definitely take that fat cap down a little bit and still have a really great roast. But I tell you, the fat on a picanha, there's something about it. Mm, very tasty. I'm telling you folks, if you're a fan of medium rare beef with a little bit of a smoke ring on there, you got to throw one of these on your Weber kettle. But don't take my word for it. I think it's time for the official taste test. <laughs> Alright y'all, and that is it. That is how to make an absolutely fantastic picanha on the Weber kettle. I highly recommend giving this one a try if you've never done it this way before. Perfectly seasoned, nice and smoky, really great sear on there, perfect medium rare, and it really couldn't be easier. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button down below. It helps me out a lot. Also drop a comment letting me know what you want to see me cook next. Big shout out to Fogo Charcoal. Thank you for sponsoring this series. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace!